What's up, it's the Electrical Code Coach here. Just want to talk about one of the common misconceptions today. So today I want to talk about this little bar right here. So if this were the first point of disconnect, we would drive our main bonding jumper screw in, we'd make sure it was tight, and that would connect our neutrals to our grounds here at the system. So whether we put, you know, extra ground bars up here, everything would be bonded, including the frame of the panel, the can itself. But I want to talk about this bar right here. Currently, this bar is connecting these two bars right here here. So if this were the first point of disconnect, I could land grounds and neutrals here. I could land grounds and neutrals here as long as my main bonding jumper was installed and everything else was up to code. So with that being said, if this is the second point of disconnect, one of the temptations is, is to just pull this bar out. Loosen it here, loosen it there, and pull that bar out. But this is where you got to be really careful. So a lot of these panels are not listed to take that bar out. Look and read on your panel cover, and it'll let you know if you uh, need to buy a ground bar kit, and it'll tell you what ground bar kit to buy. So just taking this out causes a couple you know, things, and that's what I want to talk about now. So the first dangerous thing is, is that if you pull this out, and you pull your green screw out thinking that, hey, you know, I want to separate. This is my second point of disconnect. Okay, you would have this ground bar isolated from this neutral bar, but you would not have anything bonding the frame of the can. So you could have a can that's completely energized, waiting for someone to touch it, and it would have touch potential on it, waiting for someone to touch it in between it and ground, and then they would become the light bulb, okay? The other tempting thing is to say, okay, well, I'll make this side the ground, screw it in, pull this bar out, I'll have an isolated neutral bar standing off the back of the can, and everything will be okay, right? Well, here's the problem with that. Um, is that you end up with a, a smaller terminal right here to land your neutral. It's not going to be big enough to land your neutral. You would have this larger one over here, which would you know uh, seat your ground fine, which would be fine there, but you're going to end up with a smaller neutral terminal, and likely this can is not listed to remove this right here. So this is just something, you know, something I want to talk about here. It's easy to... Um, and I can't say that I haven't done it when I, you know, very first started. Hey, let's pull this bar out. Let's bond the can over here and let's just be done with it. But you have to be really careful. First, make sure your can is listed to even take this out. I know that there are some of them that have these that you can take out. And it has a strap over here built in on the side in order to, you know, bond the frame. So ultimately, what you want to make sure that you do is that you separate the grounds and neutrals if you're past that first point of disconnect in your system. And to make sure that you still bond the frame of your can... Um, when you're doing all this the appropriate way to do it usually is to remove this green screw I just go ahead and take it out so a, a home inspector or somebody doesn't come drive it in if the second point of disconnect I would just take this screw out I would use these two bars as the neutral bars and then I would just buy me a ground bar kit and install it up here or down below here or, you know, maybe one up and, and one down. So just wanted to talk with you guys this morning about, you know, it's a common misconception that, hey, we can just take this out. Hope you guys have a great day. I'm the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it.